Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting episode 17 in our Catacomb series, uh, where we try to take you on some deep dive tutorials on specific edits in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And today's topic is going to be all about creating your own passive chance to cast skill. Um, so a lot of you may be familiar with this appearing on items, uh, especially things like your rainbow facet jewel or such. Um, it might give you something like 100% chance to cast, level 40 blizzard when you die, or, you know, on attack, things like that. Um, and we're just going to show you how to apply that to a skill um, using an old mechanic. Um, so with that said, uh, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe. You guys know the drill by now. And let's jump right into all the files you need. Um, so pretty simple edit today. We're only going to be using three files. It's going to be item types.txt, skills.txt, and uh, for us, we're going to edit states.txt. You might not need to edit that. Um, just depends on exactly what you're editing there. Um, and then you might need to edit skilledest.txt as well, just to update your tooltip with your changes. Um, but we've already shown you how to do that in a previous video, so we're just going to skip out on that today. Um, so with that said, I've already made one edit uh, for our item types. I've already edited that file. Um, so we're going to start with that and uh, explain all the changes made there. Um, now, obviously, normally I would edit these things live with you guys um, for time reasons. I went ahead and pre-edited this file, um, and I will explain as I go and show you how to kind of recreate it. Um, this complete file will also be listed in the video description, um, so you can download it and, you know, start off with the uh, completed version if you'd like. Um, so, uh, a quick explainer of how this works. Um, this was an old method discovered by an individual named Sani, or at least that's who I know it from. Um, and I'm essentially just repurposing it for the modern day so the information doesn't get lost, um, as well as making it more, uh, you know, available to resurrected players who may not know all these, you know, 20-year-old uh, workarounds and stuff. Um, so with that said, this is working on like a buffer overflow um, kind of mechanic. So this is going to allow item types to be used uh, basically as like skill replacements. Um, and then we can exploit that as a passive state item type um, and get it to use the skill we want. Now, all of that will make sense in just a few minutes here, but let me just quickly go over kind of how that works and what's needed for that. Um, so let's go ahead and just drag out our two files here and help explain that real quick. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we just care about this ID column right now for skills.txt. Um, obviously, we can see it starts at ID 0, and then at least as of, uh, you know, patch 2.52 in vanilla, um, we are looking at 370 as the ending ID uh, for our skills.txt file. Now, we're going to add one more uh, entry here for our new passive skill, um, but essentially this is the kind of ID limit that, that we're currently sitting at. Um, and what we need to do for this overflow mechanic um, is that we need to create a, a reference for every skill ID uh, as well as every skill level uh, that would be possible. Um, so now normally there's 64 total possible skill levels you can have. Uh, level zero would be you don't have the skill, and then that uh, goes all the way up to positive 63 uh, for, you know, 64 total entries. Um, so if you're doing the math, if we need a reference for every ID and every level, then we're looking at 64 times whatever is currently in your skills.txt file. Uh, again, for us, the bare minimum we would need is 371 um, for that new skill that we're going to be adding. Uh, but obviously, if you have five, 600, you know, entries, whatever in your skills.txt, you're going to need to add more rows. Um, so uh, explaining that, let's jump back to item type th item types.txt and show you how we accomplish this kind of overflow. Um, so all we've done here is we started out with ID 0, level 0, um, obviously ID 0 being attack, um, and uh, this is just kind of where we start. Um, so we just list everything incrementally all the way to the uh, last possible, uh, at least vanilla skill level, which is, uh, you know, level 63. Um, and then we start right back at ID 1 doing the same exact thing. So ID 1 all the way to level 63, and then it, you know, goes on and on and on. Um, and we add a new row for every one of those. Um, so as you can see, to account for 400 uh, ID 400 and skills.txt, uh, we needed approximately 25,000 uh, rows to accomplish that. 
Um, so if you have, you know, five, 600 rows, rows whatever, uh, you're going to need to add more uh, to support, you know, those later entries. Um, the quickest way to do that, I'm just going to show you that real fast, um, is let's just copy from like ID zero to level 63 here. And we're just going to copy that into something like Google Sheets, Excel, whatever you have. Um, and we can just, you know, copy and paste that there. Uh, once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and find and replace. We're going to look for ID1 or ID0, kind of whatever you copied there. Um, and we're going to replace it with ID, and then we're going to use open bracket X close bracket. And the reason for that will make sense in just a second here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save that change, and then we're going to copy this again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link this uh, website in the video description as well, along with the file. Um, but this will allow you to just quickly generate all those needed entries um, without messing around with things too much. So we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste all those entries in there. And you can see here, 0 to 63 is listed. And you want to go ahead and just put your settings like this. It's going to start at whatever ID that you need it to start at, uh, whether that's 0, 1, whatever. Um, and then obviously the ending value is going to be the last skill ID uh, that you think you're going to need. Um, so if you're trying to kind of max out this item types.txt file so you never have to look at it again, um, this can contain a maximum row. A uh, count of 65,536, which would allow you to support up to, you know, ID 1050 or something like that in skills.txt. I didn't do the math, um, but you've got quite a bit of flexibility there. Um, so with that said, we're just going to go to like 400, which gives us an extra 30 skills or so past vanilla. Um, obviously, increase that if you need. Uh, the important part here is that it's going to replace that open bracket X close bracket with the values. And so that's why we just used Excel real quick to just quickly replace all those. Uh, but now we're ready to generate our kind of answer. Um, and so as you can see, this is going to generate all the way to ID 400. And now we can just simply copy and paste them all. And you can paste them right into your item types.txt file. Um, and that'll go ahead and take care of that. Um, now, because it's adding, you know, 25,000 entries or whatever, it will take a couple seconds uh, when you paste that in there. Um, so just be patient. Let it do a thing. It'll kind of unfreeze, you know, after it's done. Um, we're also going to do the same thing for item types uh, and the code for those. Um, use whatever naming scheme you want. Um, again, this is a comment column uh, just for the... Uh, just to help us, uh, that's why it has the asterisk in front to indicate it's a comment column, and it's CTC for change to cast. Um, and for the item type and code, uh, the only thing that matters is that they're not used by something else in the game. So you can use whatever naming scheme you want. Uh, we just went with a letter and then 000 to 999. And then uh, just kind of repeated that over and over again. Um, but again, use what you want. The important thing is, is that you have all these entries with the, all the uh, item types listed. And once more, this file will be available in the video description if you don't want to bother with any of this or you don't need to add more rows, things like that. Um, so we've explained how it all works. Now let's actually go to use it and get into the meat of the edit. Um, so we're going to start out with skills.txt. And uh, for our example, we're going to say that we want to take something like so, slow missiles, uh, an Amazon skill, which normally would debuff ranged enemies. Um, and we're going to say that we want this to now be a passive skill that just has a chance to cast the kind of slow missiles debuff. Um, so the best way to accomplish that for this particular edit is we're going to go ahead and just clone that row. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, basically everything extra on this function. Uh, now that it's a passive, it doesn't need many of the, the entries anymore. Um, so for example, we're going to remove the serve do function. Um, we no longer want it to apply anything. Uh, we no longer to want it to have any of those aura states. Um, and we're just going to essentially go through and clear out all the sounds, all the, the stuff that um, we just don't care about now that it's a passive skill. Um, so we'll take out some animations, a line of sight, a little variable there. Um, and we're just about done here with like the cleaning up portion. Um, so we've removed all the bogus stuff. Um, the only thing we need to add now, or that's important to add, um, is that we set the passive column to one for that skill, um, just so the game knows it's a passive. Uh, now that we've done that, we're ready to add our actual chance to cast kind of skill and mechanic onto our new passive. Um, to help explain that real quick, um, we're going to just hop around the files just a little bit. 
Um, so for the passive state, uh, we're going to go ahead and give our character a dummy state uh, for this particular edit. Um, now, normally this skill would apply a state to the enemy, um, but because of the kind of way we're jigging things around, we're just going to give ourselves a dummy state, and the actual slow missile skill will still apply that uh, kind of enemy uh, state uh, to, or that target state to the enemies. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make a new state here. We'll just call it slow miss instead of slow missiles. And I'm going to go ahead and add that in our stage.txt file real quick before I forget. Um, we can copy anything really, but I'm just going to copy something like blaze. Uh, we'll clone that to the bottom. Again, we're going to call this slow miss, um, but you can you know name it whatever you want for your goals. We'll update the ID. And the only thing we care about in the states file is that it's completely blank. Um, it's because it is a dummy state, so we're going to go ahead and just make sure uh, all those are cleared out. It's empty except for that zero for the end of line, and we're all done with our state setup. Um, but now that our state exists, we're ready to tell it um, what skill we want to cast. Um, and the way we do that is by looking at skills.txt. We're going to scroll to the very bottom here, and uh, let's actually uh, update our names to, uh, I don't know, slow missiles, real. Uh, not the greatest name, but just pick what you want. Uh, update the ID. We're going to remove the class requirement. Um, now, obviously, if you want to change like your your length, your range, um, how much it uh, slows things down, all that kind of stuff, you can feel free to adjust that here. We're going to say that we like the vanilla values. Um, it's mostly because we're lazy. Um, but the part we care about uh, for our new skill is this ID. Um, that ID is uh, how we assign it. Um, so to make sense of that, uh, now that we know our ID is 371 for the skill we want to cast, um, if we go back to our item types, this is where that comment column now comes into play. So I'm going to scroll all the way down until we get to, you know, ID 371. And this is where you can decide kind of what level uh, you want that skill to apply it. Um, so we're just going to say, I don't know, something like a level 10 slow missiles is fine. Um, and for that, we can see that our entry, uh, you know, at least in, in this case, uh, is L649. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that item code, uh, that item type code, and that is what we use now as our passive I type. Uh, so we had to look up the skill ID to find that, and then we had to look up it in item types to see uh, what level and, and what entry to use. Um, so we're going to apply L649 for our passive I type. For the passive stat, this is going to be the actual like chance to uh, cast stat. Um, so for us, we're going to use item skill on attack. Um, now you might want skill on get hit or skill on death or whatever. Go ahead and you know adjust that as you'd like. Um, and for the passive calc field, um, this is going to be the chance, the actual percentage chance um, to cast that skill. So we're going to do something like B level times five um, so that every hard point they put into the skill, uh, they get a 5% you know, increase in that chance. So obviously, once they max it out, they'd have a 100% chance to cast um, this particular skill. Um, so we're all done with our kind of passive version of the skill. Um, mostly, it was just to assign it that I type and then give it the uh, chance to cast that we wanted. Um, and as far as the actual skill, um, other than like updating your skill descriptions and stuff, um, these are all the edits you need, uh, unless again, you're customizing things further to how you like. But uh, we're lazy, so we're going to say that's all good enough. And that's essentially all the edits we need. Um, so we're just going to save everything and then we'll hop back into our mod folder. And uh, as long as I didn't screw something up here, um, we should see that. Um, when we go in the game, I'll go ahead and max out that skill if it's not already. Um, and we should see that because it's maxed out, we'll have a 100% chance to cast missiles or that slow missiles debuff um, anytime we uh, do it an attack. So let's see here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just max that out. Again, we didn't update the skill description and stuff because I'm being lazy on you guys. Um, but it was 5% for every hard point. Um, so obviously, 20 times 5 is 100. Um, so we should, now that we have just, you know, again, a normal attack, um, we should see that we're casting that slow missiles debuff on every attack to monsters in range. And there you go. Um, so you can see they're all sparkly and stuff now. So that, that state 
has successfully applied to them. Um, now, obviously, these particular monsters don't actually have any kind of ranged attacks, so you know, slow missiles doesn't do anything. Um, but this is just to show you, uh, you know, how it works and that it indeed happens on every uh, attack. Uh, if I did something like let's go ahead and just do a quick reset. Um, and let's put it on one. Uh, so now I only have a 5% chance to cast uh, the skill. Um, and now you can see it's definitely not applying every time. So everything is working kind of correctly. Um, and obviously, if you want this to cast Frozen Orb or kind of anything else, you know, feel free to mess with that stuff as you like. Um, but that is how you can apply a chance to cast mechanic uh, directly to a skill um, and add a lot more flexibility and kind of diversity to your options. Um, so I hope you found this information useful. And uh, thanks for sticking around to the end. You have a great rest of the day. Bye.